Hi everyone, so I'm now back in my home here in the Philippines and I had such a blast in Japan with my friends. So for today's video, I'm just going to share with you some of my haul that I got. So um, I am looking at my table right now and I don't think I got a lot of makeup. And the main reason why is because I didn't have time. Uh, because my friends and I were going from one place to another in such a short period of time that uh, sometimes I don't have enough time to really like, you know, pick the makeup that I see and to play around with it and to decide if I want to purchase them or not. But um, anyways, I'm going to show you guys um, the things that I got. And also what I want to do is I also want to talk about um, some of my tips when you're traveling to Japan at this time because there have been some changes, especially when you're taking the Shinkansen going from one place to another. And also maybe like, you know, one way that you can do to uh, make your trip to Japan not as heavy in terms of carrying your luggage everywhere uh, with you. All right, so um, let me start first by showing you guys what I got um, from Don Quixote. So Don Quixote is like this big shopping um, department store that's like, you know, tax free. So if you're going to go there, you have to bring your passport with you because you have to show um, your arrival card when you are paying for all that you have picked up in the store. So in your passport, when you arrive in Japan, um, they're going to put a sticker there with a QR code. And I think there is like a certain number there that indicates who you are, like, you know, that you're a tourist and um, like, you know, the approval, things like that, whatever. So I think what Don Quixote does is that when you're at the cashier, they have to check that QR code, you know, that sticker that they put put on your passport and then um, they encode that into their um, cash register so it just like you know um, removes the tax automatically from your purchase and also one more thing I would like to say that when you're buying something from Don Quixote everything that you purchase is placed inside a plastic like this and it is stated here in the plastic that do not open the packaging until you have left Japan please note that if you consume this product or all the products that's inside while you are in Japan, you may be subject to pay for consumption tax. So um, they're quite strict about that. Based on my experience, nobody has ever asked me or checked my luggage when I was leaving the country to see if I had opened this plastic. But I never do it anyway because, um, like, you know, I just put this straight into my luggage and truthfully, it just, like, you know, keeps everything in place in uh, my luggage and, like, you know, it's it just makes it easy for me to transport this um, when I am uh, on my way home. All right, so let's go through the things that I have here in the plastic bag. So I actually went to the Don Quixote store in Asakusa because it's a 24-hour Don Quixote. So I actually went there um, on the night on the night before my flight back here to the Philippines. And um, it, I went there at around like I think 9.30 in the evening or 10.30. And I do have to say that the lines at the cashier at the time were extremely long. And the reason why I decided to go to Don Quixote like, you know, the night before my flight is because I was actually tra traveling from um, Kyoto to Osaka and then, you know, like, you know, all the way to Tokyo. So I didn't want to carry a lot of um, baggage with me um, going from one prefecture to another. So that's the primary reason why I waited last minute before I went um, shopping in Don Quixote. So um, what do I have here? So I have here some boxer shorts. I forgot how much this was. I think it was like um, a thousand yen or something. Like I, I I, remember though that if I buy three, I get it at a much more cheaper price. So that's why I have three here. And my partner and I, we love um, wearing boxers, especially for sleeping. So that's why I got this. It's made of cotton, so it's actually very soft. So it's going to be very comfortable to use. And I also got some eye drops. So I've already shown you guys these eye drops before. Like um, when I went to Japan with my best friend Nat in November, and I came back home and I showed you guys a haul of the things that I got. Um, I showed you these, but I also got a few other different types of eye drops. Now, um, these two eye drops here are the ones that I got the last time, and the packaging here is different, wherein they actually look like this. So one has this, like, you know, yellow orange kind of a packaging, and the other one has a blue kind of a cap packaging and this one is good for red eye and this one is like just you know your regular um, eye drop and um, I am actually very interested to see what's in this eye drop so let me just open the box okay so it actually comes in a packaging like this so let me just open it 
Okay, so I'll call this out. So it comes in a green type of... Is it green? Is it a liquid green? Or maybe it's just like, you know, the plastic packaging. So um, I think the main difference between this and this is that um, it this has like, you know, sodium and potassium. And this one just has like, you know, um, B-complex, um, vitamin A, and E. So um, I don't get vitamin A in this eye drop. So I guess that's the main difference between these two eye drops. Now, um, I also got this um, eye drop and um, it almost is the same type of um, vitamin content as this um, eye drop packaging. But what attracted me to this is actually this picture here. So I believe that this um, eye drop is actually good for people who are using contact lenses. So let me just open the packaging again. So again, we have that green um, bottle packaging, but I guess this eye drop and this eye drop belongs to the same brand. That's why their packagings are almost similar. So I'm actually very excited to try this, especially this because um, I'm not too sure yet if this has menthol in it because these two have a very mentholy flavor on the eyes. So why don't we just try it right now? Okay, so let me try this first. So this one is the one that's good for people who wear contact lenses. Ah, it still has that mentally flavor. <laughs> but at least we know that it's um, okay to be used for people who have um, contact lenses. Wow, that's super mentally. <laughs> okay, let me just wait a few minutes for that mental sensation to disappear. I do like it though. It really gives like, you know, the eye a very nice brightening effect, which I really, really love. And then like, you know, it just makes everything look brighter and I think it makes my eyes more relaxed. Wow, look at that. I love it. I love these types of eye drops. Okay, so let me try this on the other eye now. Whoa. Okay, that's quite surprising for me because this one didn't have a mentally sensation at all in the eyes. So that's quite remarkable. And I'm also glad that I have this, like, you know, in comparison to the other eye drops that I have in my kit, mainly because there are some people who do not like the mentally sensation of the eye drops. So I'm very happy with that. I also got the Shiseido Pressed Baby Powder, so this is medicated, so I'm going to give this to one of our foster kids here in the house. I think she will like this. And I also purchased a Shuimura Eyelash Curler. Now, um, I have a difficulty finding this here in the Philippines, and like, you know, as needed, and if I find myself in Japan or in Don Quixote, I always pick up a new one whenever necessary. Now, I also got this like DHC Lip Balm, so I have been like in search of um like you know finding lip balms that will keep my lips hydrated so let me just try to see if i can open the packaging properly so it says here on the packaging that it's actually a lip cream and there seems to be an like you know a seal of an award for this product so let's see if this is actually like, you know, live up to its, like, you no know, reputation. Okay, so the DHC lip balm comes in a packaging like this. Very nice pink color. And the balm here is, like, you know, in a clear form. And, mm, it actually feels very, very soft on the lips. And it really, like, you know, applies very nicely. And it feels very soft on the lips. It's almost like a much more softer version of like you know the Vaseline original lip therapy. I can feel it to be a little bit emollient already and I can feel it doing its job so um, let's see if this will actually work in the long run so I'm actually glad that I'm able to try this. Mm, feels good in my lips. Doesn't have a taste. Doesn't have a scent either so not bad. And the other thing that I got is this heated eye mask so I love these types of an eye mask especially when i am very very tired like example when i have you know my sleep has been off for days and then my eye starts to twitch i love using um heated eye mask because it just helps like you know my eyes relax and then it just pumps in all of the blood to like you know make it circulate into my eye area so i really love this and um 
the first time I tried this, I was I think I found I saw this in Taiwan before. Or it might be a different brand, but the packaging really looks the same. So um yeah, I'm so excited to try this. So there are 12 pieces in here, and let me open the packaging. And they come individually packed, so which is actually great because um as soon as you tear this and you open the mask and you put it on your eye, um it activates it and the steam starts to um come out from the eye mask. So that's that and the other thing is this shaving gel so um, I have been on the lookout for a new shaving gel or like you know a shaving cream because uh, my favorite shaving cream from VMV Hypoallergenics has been discontinued so I'm like mm, so sad and then I don't like um, the shaving um, gels or creams that are being sold like you know at the drugstores here so I'm quite excited to try this and this is in a gel type so which is okay for me because after all I have like you know oily skin so a gel is it works for me this is a very nice like you know mentally scent also like, I think a little bit like a hint of cucumber so I'm not sure so um so I decided to try this. So I actually picked this up last minute when I was at the, like, you know, en route to the cashiers. I saw this, like, you know, at the bottom of the shelf and I just grabbed it. So I am so excited to try this out. Now, speaking of lip balm, I picked something up at the drugstore and um, this is the packaging of it. And it's actually um, Uno. So it's actually a brand uh, that is targeted to males and uh, you can actually pick it up anywhere in Japan. So, but I just saw this in um i think family mart or lawson i can't remember it must have been family mart and this is actually like at the end a lip balm so um if, if the packaging comes like this it's in gray with a you know black labeling and if you dial it up it actually has a gray colored bullet now what's so amazing about this particular um, lip balm of sorts is that although it's gray here but when you apply it on your lips it gives the lips a very nice like you know pinkish sheen which is actually very pretty and i love it and it's actually very easy to uh, like you know apply on your lip it glides very nicely it also um you know very smoothly and it fills in um the entire area of your lips with like you know this like ultimate moisturization so i really really love it so um i do remember my friend marius he was the one who introduced this to me um i remember when i went back when i went to japan in november he goes like hey are you in japan can you get me an uno lip balm please i got marius one and i forgot to um get one for myself uh, mainly because um this was actually out of stock at uh the place where i got it so i said to myself oh maybe this um really does sell very well it's actually very very affordable and now that i have experienced this lip balm for myself for the first time i have to say it's actually quite good look at that it's giving my lips a very nice hint of color and it's also making it extra moisturized so kudos to this i love this so this is uno lip creator Cool. Now, speaking of drugstore purchases, I also got this um, Nonio uh, mouth spray. I love how small it is and it really fits in my daily bag here. So I think I showed you guys this um, when I was vlogging, when I was like, you know, packing to go to Japan. And it's actually this small. So it's a clear herb mint mouth spray and I just love how easy it is to carry around and it does a job it has a very nice minty flavor and it lasts quite a long time on the mouth so that's why i got this now still in the vein of um purchases from the convenience store let me just show you guys these what <laughs> japanese makeup magazines that i got from family mart so i actually got two so if you have seen the short of me showing you guys this where in like you know that if you buy beauty magazines in japan sometimes you get a freebie so let's start with this magazine first so this is makia so this is one of my favorite uh, magazines to purchase when i go to japan this magazine actually came with a freebie of avaji skincare products in sample size and, and what's so amazing about like you know freebies in beauty magazines in japan is that it's just actually like you know inserted in between the magazine and it's just like you know kept in place with a um, rubber band and mind you 
I don't think it gets stolen because all of the Makia magazines that I have seen on the displays rack um, still have their boxes like this. I think if they were going to um, do this in other countries, I don't think this is going to work. Now, by the way, this magazine uh, costs 850 yen. So um, this is around like maybe 400 pesos. So I think this magazine is less than $10. So it's actually very affordable. So let's open this freebie box here. Just imagine how amazing packaging is in Japan. So there's a flyer here of the products that's inside. So it actually is, oh wow, look at that. So it's actually a small um, bottle of Obaji Derma Advanced Lift, intensive solution for skin. Ah, very interesting. I wasn't expecting to see something like this in the box. I was expecting more like, you know, a few sachets or something. And the other one that's here is the Obaji Vitamin C Serum. Very interesting. Now, before I move on, let me show you guys how these products were actually like, you know, placed in the box here. Let me just return this. So you get this box packaging, right? And then you slide the sleeve off and it comes out like that. How cool is that? Presentation. I tell you, in Japan, it's very amazing, even with food. All right, and the next magazine that I have here is from Voice or Voce. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, this is the first time that I have bought this magazine, so I'm actually quite excited to um, go through it later. So this one is a little bit more expensive than Makia. So this one is at around like in 980 yen. So this is like around 500 pesos. And the freebie that we will get here is actually some products from Dior. Ah, here you go. All right. So you actually flip it open and we actually get one small sample size of Dior Forever skin glow and i think this is in 1n and we have the dior capture total serum so i'm so excited to try this and i love sample sizes because like you know they would fit inside my kit and if i need to um go on set especially when i'm on location sometimes sample sizes um are a blessing because i don't have to carry a lot of like you know heavy bottles when i go to work look at that so it just comes in a size like this so it's very cute so this is what five mils of product so this is good for maybe two applications so uh, let's just wait and see all right so those are the magazines that i got from the convenience store so when i was in osaka um i was going through the drug stores because like you know my friend needed some shampoo and i was just like really browsing through and i was actually very attracted to this trio of skincare products and let me just show you guys this so look at that isn't that so cute and very attractive can you imagine seeing this on the shelf in the drugstore like i mean the colors here really like you know catches your eye now i actually saw this before when i went there in november and i decided not to get them because i had just gotten some new retinol products and some new vitamin c products and i really didn't want to have any doubles especially from a different brand because um, sometimes I'm very scared of cross reactions happening on my face, but these three were just calling out to me again <laughs> when I was there, so I decided to get it. So this is actually from the brand Unlabel Lab, and this one is a vitamin C serum of sorts. Okay, so it's an essence, and then this one is a ceramide essence, and this one is a retinol essence. Now, um, I just I'm not sure on how much percentage of retinol is here or even like, you know, ceramide or even like, you know, vitamin C and even what type of vitamin C is in here because there are no English translations of the ingredients at the back. So maybe I would have to like, you know, go through Google Translate for this because I just really want to check them out first uh, before I use it on my face but the ceramide here i am not intending of using this personally but i'm actually intending this of um, putting it on my kit because i don't need ceramides for my skin because i have oily skin but i am very very interested in trying out the vitamin c essence and the retinol essence because these are the two other types of skincare products that i use on a regular basis on myself so um just a quick let me just show you guys the packaging of these skincare products if i can open it 
Oh my gosh. They're packaged too well in this, like, you know, plasticky box. Ah, it says here it's a vitamin C derivative. So this is not ascorbic acid. I'm sure of that. I can't open the box. Okay, so when the product slides out of the box here, they all come in this, like, you know, plastic sleeve here. And the package design of the essence is actually very chic. Like, you know, for me, and it's very minimal, but I do love the pop of color. Because again, as a makeup artist, I am very attracted to colors. And if I see colors like this, um, like, you know, my eyes just, they can directly um, go to them. So each of these is like 50 mils of product. And if we open the cap, ah, so it comes in a uh, pump. So that's actually very interesting. Wow. So I'm actually very excited to try this. So let me just pump out maybe the vitamin C so that we can see how it looks like. Okay, so it's actually very liquidy. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, there you go. It's running down. And it's clear. It doesn't have a scent. And this is how it looks like if we apply it on the skin. Hmm. It has a... Does it have an oily feel to it? Not really, but it's like... It's like a combination of oil and water, so it's like an emulsion of sorts. It feels very wet. Oh, now I can smell a hint of the vitamin C, but it's not overly strong. It's like, actually, it's actually quite nice. Hmm. Okay, so after rubbing it on my hand, so there's a very nice glow that we can see. Oh, how cool is that? So let me try the ceramide. Okay, so this is the ceramide. Wow, okay. So it is also very liquidy, just like the vitamin C essence. And let's rub it into my hand. It has a slight scent to it. It smells very fresh, not overpowering. And the feeling of the product on my fingers is the same feeling that I felt with the vitamin C here. And it also gives the skin this very nice glow. So the vitamin C is dewy, well this one is very glowy, so the ceramide essence here will really give moisturization to your skin. Ah, I'm so excited to try this. So these are the three skincare products that I bought off of the um, drugstore there. Um, I think the most expensive here might have been the retinol because this one was priced at almost 2,000 yen, so that's like around 1,000 pesos, which is not so bad for a retinol product and then these two are i believe less than a thousand yen or one is a little bit over a thousand yen so i'm just going to do a little bit of research and find out about these products and then if i can find their prices i'm going to put it down on the description box for you to check it out okay now shopping streets are a big thing in japan and usually that's where you will end up whenever you are there and these are the things that i got in the shopping street so this one i believe i got in the Shinshaibashi shopping street in osaka and these are like you know slippers and i already had one actually from a few years ago but um my partner actually wears this all the time but unfortunately when malena was a puppy she bit <laughs> and destroyed his slippers so i decided to get my boyfriend uh, a new one a new pair so this is only 2000 yen so that's around like you know a thousand pesos so it's actually quite um affordable and it's not made of bamboo it looks like it's made of bamboo but i think it's made of like you know rubber or like you know plastic material it's actually very soft like you know, when you touch it and this is actually perfect to use like you know if you have if you want to go out into the garden if you want to use it like an outdoor slipper you can actually use this now the other thing that i bought from sinsaibashi shopping street in osaka is this matcha so um it is not the usual matcha place that i buy my matcha from because i can't seem to find that shop anymore and if you follow me on instagram uh, you would see me like you know posts pictures or videos of me like you know preparing matcha for the evening and i technically ran out of matcha a few weeks ago and i'm so glad that i went back to osaka because i got myself a new stock of matcha in this very beautiful sakura packaging look at that it's very beautiful now i'm 
forgot the name of the shop. It's not stated here, but I just saw it off of the side. And when I saw that they were um, selling matcha, and it actually comes from Uji. So Uji is a uh, town, like I think an hour south of Kyoto, which is renowned to make the best green tea in Japan ever. So the matcha that's inside here comes from Uji. And if you are someone who um, you know, it's a fan of Lisa Aldridge. Um, her foundation has a lot of antioxidants, and one of the main flavor there is green tea from Uji. So when you buy matcha for the first time, like especially in canisters like this, uh, the matcha is actually wrapped in tin. So when you get home, all you have to do is to remove the matcha from its packaging, and then you keep it here. And then you cover it, of course, so that it just maintains its freshness until you ran out. And of course, you can always recycle the packaging that the matcha comes in with. So isn't that so cute? I'm so glad that I found this. Okay, so what is inside this box here? I'm sure you guys can hear it. Um, this is actually a wind chime, and I got this in Kyoto. Yes, near the Kiyu Mizadera Temple, uh, when my friends and I were like walking around there one very warm morning. And um, I actually had bought a wind chime before uh, when I went to Japan in 2011, and it has since been destroyed because, after all, we have a lot of storms here in the Philippines, right? So I just, when I saw this dangling at the cashiers, I said to myself, I think I need to buy a new one for the house. And here it is. It's so cute. It's less than 2,000 yen. So this is like around 1,000 pesos only. So it's actually very affordable. And it looks very sturdy and very pretty. And I love the sound that the bell makes here. Isn't that so nice? And I find it very relaxing, like, you know. And also one other thing for me when I, you know, think about Kyoto, Aside from the food, aside from the geishas, I always seem to remember wind chimes. And I think mainly because the first time I went to Kyoto, this was the first thing that I have noticed. Like when I went in, like, you know, the house that I rented had, had a lot of wind chimes. And then when I'd be walking around Kyoto, going through stores, um, they all had wind chimes. And then um, I also do remember the fact that it was summer at the time. So maybe that's why all the wind chimes were out. Now I have two other things here that I bought in Kyoto. So one is in this box like this and I actually bought these two products. Like this is a bamboo whisk for matcha. I bought this in a small shop in Gion. So this is where the area where all the geishas like you know live and perform things like that. And I actually got myself a new matcha drinking um, cup. How cool is that? Because uh, the other matcha cup that I bought was actually quite small. And that's the reason why I decided to buy a smaller bamboo whisk. Because um, the big bamboo whisk that I have doesn't fit in the matcha um, cup that I bought back in November. But at the time that I saw this on the table in that shop, um, this cup was actually beside it. And I said to myself, that looks actually very pretty. And can you imagine the green color of the matcha here would just like really pop like you know surrounded by the dark hue of the cup and i said to myself i think i have to have that and it's actually not very expensive you know um it's i i can't remember how much it was but i didn't really spend a lot of money buying these two together now the other thing that i also bought in the shop is more matcha so as you guys can see here so it's not as fancy as this one that i found in um Osaka, but I do love the packaging of this. It's very nice, very straightforward. It's 100 grams of product. And this is also from Uji. Now, I have a few empty um, canisters for green tea here. So what I can do is I can just like, you know, put this matcha into this green tea canister that I got years ago. So that's it. I'm very, very happy with my green tea stash this year. So that's going to stock me up for a few months. Now, what else did I buy? Ah, yes. I bought these amazing hauri. So let me just show you guys this. This is a hauri. Can you guys see it? So it's like a jacket for kimonos. 
So I actually have a, few, a number of Howries here um, in my closet upstairs. And I really love wearing this um, when I just want to be a little bit stylish. So let me just put this over so that you guys can see it. And you can actually just wear this in a very casual manner, like just with a white shirt and jeans. Let me go behind my table so you guys can see it fully. Look at that. Very nice sleeve here. The design on the cloth is very beautiful. And this is the first time that I'm actually wearing a black howry. So if I just want something to wear, you know, on a nice out for an event or a nice, like, you know, dinner date with my boyfriend on a cool night, this is a nice um, jacket to use. Look at that. Look at the texture of this. And mind you, this was only 2,000 yen. Again, only 1,000 pesos. Amazing, right? Very beautiful. I believe that this was a steal for me. Now, the other color that I got is this very nice, like, you know, violet -y shade here. That's like the color of sunset. So I think this was a vintage type of a hauri. I think this one was, like, you know, made in the 80s. Look at that. Look how beautiful the color is. So you can still see the stitching here on the side, on the side here, which I don't mind because, um, you know, in kimonos, you can actually remove the stitching that you find in here so that it's actually easier to uh, wash. And then you can just stitch it up again um, in a very loose manner. And then they, for some reason, stick together. So I am actually very happy that I got new hauri. And I really love this color. Like, you know, it's a very nice, it's vibrant color. It's not too screaming, but it just gives this very nice pop of color into your outfit. And, you know, with me, I'm always wearing a white shirt, like, when I go to work. And this can just be a very nice accent to wear. So, look at that. I bought this um, in a small shop when I was doing the Philosopher's Path in... Um, Kyoto. So I believe I did put a short up here on YouTube. So I'm going to put a link down to that philosopher's path so that you can have an idea where I found this Howry. Well, this black one, I found this in a store when I was walking in Mishiki Market in Kyoto. So very nice and very elegant looking, but also very like, you know, cool and different. And I just love how nice they look. I really love this. Like, you know, these sleeves here. You can, you can even, like, put your phone here if you want to or a fan. So I think that's what, like, you know, people do. I love Howry. So Howry, if you're going to Japan, get one. They are very affordable. And you can see them anywhere. You can you know, just hanging in any shopping street that you go to. Now, on this trip of mine to Japan, I was actually very lucky because I was actually able to go to the Shiseido Corporate Museum. Again, I did put up a short of me going to the museum, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to take photos and videos inside because it was not allowed. And I do have to say that it was very enriching, especially if you're a fan of Shiseido because they have everything in display there. Like, you know, they have products from when they first began making cosmetics all the way to the present. And then they have an array of stories that they um, discuss about the brand and the evolution of the brand. And even a lot of advertising materials, like, you know, from old style posters to the more modern um, reiteration of a lot of their advertising campaigns. The Shiseido Museum is located in Kakegawa in Chizuoka Prefecture. So it's I was coming from Osaka, so it was two hours from Osaka on the bullet train to get there, so it's that far. And then from Tokyo, I think it's like an hour and a half um, from Tokyo, so it's right, really right in the middle. And um, again, I consider myself to be very lucky that I was able to go there because the Shiseido Corporate Museum is only open on a Friday, and that's it. So. Um, I was actually traveling from Osaka to Tokyo on a Friday. I begged my friends, like, can we just please make a short stop in the Shiseido Museum in Kakegawa before we go onwards to Tokyo? And they were very, very supportive, so I appreciated them for that. And um, when I was there, I actually bought some stuff. So they have these magazines here. So it's like uh, three volumes of magazines. And unfortunately, they are in Japanese. 
And even like everything, like their displays, by the way, inside the museum, they're all in Japanese. And there's just a very few um, English translations for certain um, displays. Um, so that's the sad thing about it. But anyway, so inside this magazine, they're all like Japanese. But the main reason why I decided to get them is because they just, um, they're a very nice visual representation of my uh, visit there. And if I just need to uh, look for something for inspiration, I can just flip through the pages and I can see it. One thing that I was very grateful for with that experience is that when I bought this, I was actually talking to the woman in my broken Japanese, by the way, uh, with a woman at the cashier. And I just told her that I'm a makeup artist and I'm a fan of the brand. And um, I actually already left uh, the museum and I heard her calling out um, to me um, outside and she actually gave me uh, the English version of the Shiseido story in this book. So I was actually very grateful for this. I actually gave her a very deep bow, like, you know, as a sign of my gratitude because I was actually not expecting this. Because if I just saw this for sale on the rack, I would have bought it because this would be a great way of, like, you know, getting more intimate information about the brand and their products. So I cannot wait to read this. I haven't read it yet. So I have just arrived. So... I'm sure over the Holy Week celebrations here in the Philippines when everyone goes into vacation, this will be my reading of choice. So if you're a makeup nerd or a makeup history buff or even a, just like a fan of Shiseido, if you decide to go to Japan, do visit the Shiseido Corporate Museum and just, you know, plan your itinerary around the fact that they are only open on Fridays. Oh, and by the way, uh, Kakigawa is actually a very nice um, stop to make in Japan. So it's a castle town and they're also known for produ producing green tea by the way. So um, let me just say that. So um, it's actually a very small town and um, if you don't follow me on my Instagram page, I actually posted there some pictures of me going around the castle grounds in Kakegawa, in Kakegawa Castle, and having my pictures taken with the cherry blossoms. It's actually amazing. So you can actually hit two birds with one stone when you go to Kakegawa. You can go and visit the Shiseido Corporate Museum, and then you can also go around the castle grounds because you won't spend more than an hour or two at the Shiseido Corporate Museum when you are there. So you can actually like go around and see what Kakegawa has to offer. And the piece de resistance of this video is actually what is inside this paper bag. And I got this at the Beni Museum when I was in Tokyo. So Beni is actually the traditional rouge in Japan. And I have been wanting to go to the Beni Museum for a long time. And I was also very excited to purchase the Benny product. So let me just show you guys this. I don't want to talk about this product in detail in this video because I want to create a standalone video for this wherein we will also try this out together. But this is how Benny actually looks like. So let me just give you a brief look into this. Look at this rouge product. Amazing, right? Yes, you heard me right. This is a rouge product, but don't worry. I know it looks green here on the monitor because it actually is. But if you follow me on Instagram, you would already know that if you activate this with water, it turns red. So I'm going to save all the information about this product for a later video so please do subscribe if you want to all right so if you want to know more about my adventures at the benny museum i'm gonna put a link down on the description box to the video that i created when i was there and i was actually very grateful that i was allowed to take videos and pictures because it's very rare for a Japanese brand or like, you know, an establishment to allow, like, you know, for photos and for uh, videos to be taken. And um, I think that's like the way to go because it just puts information out and like, you know, it just gives people an idea of what it's inside the museum, especially if you are into like, you know, makeup history or if you're into like, you know, Japanese beauty, things like that. So um, yeah, anyways, I won't babble on because um, this might, uh, get too long. So anywho, the other thing that I got from the Benny Museum is safflower tea. So I was just very curious about this when I saw this like you know on the counter when I was paying for the Benny and um, I said to myself why don't I just try it and like you know I love drinking tea, chamomile tea, 
rose hip tea, you know, green tea, peppermint tea, things like that. So I'm a, I'm a huge drinker of tea. So I've never had safflower tea before, so I decided to try it. And the reason why they were selling safflower tea there is because the color of the Benny that you saw earlier is actually taken from the petals of the safflower. So that's how cool it is. Now at this point, I'm just going to give you guys a few tips and some realization about my recent trip to Japan. So for this trip, I did purchase a JR Pass. So this is a nationwide JR Pass. So I can go all around Japan with my pass. Now I bought this online on their website and um, I bought this I think uh, a week or two before I was scheduled to arrive in Japan. So what happens is after you purchase this on their website you get a voucher and you present that voucher um, at the counter where you decide to pick this up. So since I arrived in Osaka with my friends we picked this up in the JR West office just outside the airport you know right in front of the gates to the train station. So when I was there the line was a little bit long but but I didn't wait too long at the queue so it moved very very fast. Now the great thing about the JR Pass right now is that they now have an online um, seat reservation service so that's actually great because um, at least even before I arrived in Japan I was already actually able to reserve seats on the bullet train and on the Narita Express from Tokyo to Narita Airport. So um, because it's very important now that you have to have reserved seats because at least it just makes your travel on the Shinkansen a much more pleasant experience because sometimes there are some people, they use the Shinkansen trains uh, for commuting from one city to another and they all crowd in the carriages for underserved seats. So can you imagine that you're just like, you know, bumping into each other and you're trying to clamor for seats so that you just have, you can just sit down for the journey because after all, sometimes, as I said earlier, it takes three to four hours to go from Osaka to Tokyo straight. So um, you don't want to be standing up for like three, four hours at a time, if you know what I mean. Although you can actually have your seats printed in other JR ticketing offices around the country, but since you're already picking up your JR pass at the airport, you might as well just pick up your reserved seats already. So um, that's very important. And also one other thing, like, you know, you have to have a reserved seat to ride the Narita Express train from either Shinjuku, Shibuya, or Tokyo stations all the way to Narita. So having this is just like a really great help. And yes, it's a little bit pricey, but mind you, it's a good value for money, especially if you're traveling from one part of Japan to another and you're riding bullet trains because truthfully, it's actually quite a bargain. But if you're only traveling in a specific area, go get an area pass. Like in Tokyo, you can get a Tokyo area pass. If you're only in Osaka and Kyoto and Hiroshima, get a Hiroshima pass. So there are other passes available aside from the JR pass. Okay. And one more thing, there are new rules on the Shinkansen now, wherein oversized luggage are not allowed on the train. And if you are traveling with a large suitcase, you might have to pay like I think a thousand yen extra for that, but you have to make a reservation for your luggage. And um, that's why if you purchase a JR Pass, you're actually able to do that as well on the website, okay? But if you want to have a much more seamless um, like you know travel experience in Japan, do get a Takubin service. So this is just like you know the paper of the Takubin service. But um, let me just show you guys what I have here. So um, it's actually all in Japanese. And what this Takubin service does is that it actually ships your luggage from your hotel to the next hotel that you are staying at. So um, just make sure that when you're availing this, um, you can ask help from someone who can write in Japanese for you because it's very important that the um, address that's written here is actually in Japanese. So I'm actually very grateful to Emiko-chan who was like, you know, a good friend of mine and also um, I think she's the manager of the hostel where I love staying at when I am in Kyoto. She actually filled in all the necessary information on the Takubin um, slip here. And the most amazing thing about Takubin service is that you can actually go to the convenience stores in Japan and then you can actually leave your luggage there and then you can actually pay for it. You can actually leave it there for a few days even because it's actually indicated on the Takubin slip here when you want your luggage to actually arrive in the hotel of your next destination. So that's actually 
really great. Like, you know, and I did this for the first time in this trip and I really enjoyed it because I didn't have to carry my luggage with me all the time. Can you imagine sometimes, like, you know, there are a lot of flights of stairs in train stations in Japan and sometimes I can't find the elevator and sometimes there are elevators that are located in a much more further side of the train station. So it's really going out of the way and sometimes when you transfer to a smaller train station or even to the subway you would have to bring your luggage down and bring it up again so there's a lot of carrying going on and the main reason why i decided to get a takibin service for this trip is because as i've said earlier my friends and i went to the shishido museum in kakegawa so um i actually didn't want us three to be carrying our luggage all the way to kakegawa bring down our luggage and then pray to God that there are three empty coin lockers at the train station, which rarely happens, if you know what I mean. And um, true enough, uh, I'm so glad that we were able to do it because at least it, it gave us less worry and they, you know, we only carried our backpack with us or our bag and just, you know, we were able to go around freely in Kakegawa without worrying. Um, about our luggage so that's something that you guys have to look into and I have to say like when I said that I wanted my luggage to arrive at the hotel of my next destination um, by like you know March 24 it was there and I can also indicate here on the tacky bin slip what time I want my luggage to arrive in the hotel and I found this to be a very great um, perk of doing this um, especially if you are booking yourself in hotels or inns that are run by like you know like like a single proprietor and he doesn't have and they don't have a lot of staff because um asking the takibin service to deliver my luggage between 2 p.m and 4 p.m um it doesn't impede on like you know the things that the staff in the hotel are doing in the morning because that's when they're very very busy because like you know they're cleaning out rooms they're cleaning out beddings things like that so at least having my luggage arrive there after lunch they would have relaxed already and everything that they needed to do that morning is already done so mind you this is one of the best um things that you can do in japan but you're actually able to travel quite leisurely um throughout the country oh and one more thing before i let you go please check out my vlog um, i actually went to one of my most favorite places in kyoto and it's a public bath so it's called omeyo rakuen and every time i am in kyoto i go there and i soak my tired body especially when i've been like you know walking for hours or just like you've been traveling and it just really helps me relax plus i love the experience of something like you know very japanese and very traditional so maybe that might interest you all right so that's it so um if you want to see more of my japan adventure please go to my instagram page so i did post a lot and i also did post a few videos um here on my youtube channel so i'm gonna uh, put a link to down on the description box of them if you are interested to see like you know my walk to the shishido corporate museum my adventures at the benny museum and just like you know walking around um kyoto so i didn't really like make a lot because Again, I'm not a travel vlogger and I, I, I'm not comfortable, like, you know, walking around and, like, you know, taking videos of myself and talking because I really, like, you know, when I travel, I really want to just, like, look at everything and see everything. And since I was with friends as well, so I wanted to spend my time with them because, like, you know, Neil lives in Singapore, Mikey lives in London, so I don't really see them a lot. And, like, you know, when I see them, we really spent our time bonding together because you know these are my friends since college and college was like what 20 years ago so um yeah it's a great so it was a really great experience and i think like you know as i said in my um vlog like you know the come pack with me to japan vlog um this is a very nice way of celebrating like you know an early celebration of my 41st birthday all right so i guess that's it for me today if you guys have any more questions about all the products that i used or like you know all the things that i did in japan or like whatever that you need to know um about japan please leave them down in the comments box and i'm going to answer to the best of my ability all right so i'm gonna let you guys go now thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and i hope that you're having a good day wherever you are Bye.